Hey guys, TGP Fishing Outdoors coming back with another video and you guys know by the title and thumbnail of this video why you're here. It's the dog days of summer. It's summertime. So if you're watching this in June, July, August, hey, be sure to be subscribed if you're new. I'm trying to hit 400 subs before the end of June. If I do, I'll be giving away a Guggen Squad Biggins XL kit. But if you're watching this in July or August, I'm sure I'm doing a goal there. I do giveaways all the time. Uh, but before I want to talk about the best lures in the dog days of summer, I want to get in the verse of the day, which comes from Psalms 107, 13, and 14. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of their darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Chains. It's an amazing verse. Take that verse throughout your week. So, let's get right into it. So, uh, the dog days of summer, the bass are, are are pretty much fired up, but also it's hot. So their metabolisms are going really, really fast, but it's hot. So it's like being hungry, but also you don't want to run all day because it's hot out. So I guess before I get into lures, I want to talk about places uh, this is basically places just for, for me that I target. You guys might have something different, but what I target in the summertime and pretty much all year round, but I definitely heavily hit these in the summer are ledges and brush piles and any deep water pretty much. Um, but, but brush piles like trees and stumps, I just target those more than rocks this time of year. Um, and ledges so we have a couple ledges over here the the bank kind of slopes down and then drops off those bass will be right there on that drop off waiting for the bluegill to come over when they're spawning come over and they'll just come up and ambush them in the in the brush piles you know they can hide hide in there and ambush prey in deep water it's usually cooler um, if there is any uh, water coming in be sure to target that um, for the fresh cool aerated water because also summertime it the oxygen in the water drops because of the higher temperatures so in the cooler months the oxygen is more so the bass are more uh, they're they're pretty much more active that time than they are in summertime but any cool water there is, they'll be around that. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much on that that I target. Uh, if you want me to see, a, if you want me to do a video on all body of water and all baits, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but let's uh, let's get right into baits for right now for the summertime. So starting off hot right here is the frog. So this is a Terminator. Uh, Poppin' Frog. It's black. I'm not sure what uh, the color is on the website, but it's a black Poppin' Frog. And I have this on a 7.6. Yeah, 7.6 medium heavy. Can't get that hook back in there. I have it on a 7.6 medium heavy with 65 pound braid and a Daiwa CC80 7.5 to 1 gear ratio. You can either use a medium heavy or a heavy. I use a poppin' frog a lot of times because I'm in open water. So your different kinds of frogs, you have your regular, uh, your regular shaped frogs. You guys know what I'm kind of talking about uh, that don't have a cupped lip. Those are good for, for mats. And if I'm throwing a frog over mats, I'll probably use that just because it's a longer rod and a little bit stiffer or you can go up to a heavy rod. So this is my jig rod, but you can also throw it on that if you are really targeting these, uh, the vegetation areas. So that is one thing that I have tied on all year round in the summer. Works great in the morning and the evening. Uh, if you're throwing a frog midday, try to target those mats or grassy areas or anywhere where there's really shade. I also have a buzz bait tied on or I go with a whopper plopper Either one of those will work good for topwaters this year. Really, any topwater 
is great in summertime. Mornings and evenings for your best times, um, but you can catch fish all day, all, all year round, all day, pretty much. So I mentioned the heavy rod, so, and vegetation. So this is my seven foot six heavy rod, and I have a Abu Garcia Black Max, six four to one gear ratio, 65 pound braid. Right now I have a jig tied on it, but if I go somewhere where there's a lot of vegetation, like deep mats, I will switch over to a punching rig. So it's like a Texas rig, but beefed up. So I'll have, this is like one and a half ounce, two ounce weight. And I'll have a big, this is just a regular, regular hook and Texas rig it. So your bait can drop straight down and you'll have a craw, more like a beaver style bait, something that won't flap. So I could strike King Rage Tail. You don't really want that flapping uh, through the grass because it'll get all caught up. You kind of want something that'll shoot straight down. So a punching rig, flipping rig, you can do that. Um, I don't know if it's kind of underrated, but something I've learned in the past couple years, this is messed up, so don't really look at that too much. But it is a drop shot. And that works great on ledges and on the edges of grass mats. So there was one year I was fishing in the pond. It was like a fishbowl shape and then there was grass all around it. So if you guys have something similar, just take notes in your head of this. So I had, there was a grass ring all around it, submerged vegetation. I mean, it was thick. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try a drop shot. I, I, I don't really try it that much. I threw it right on the edge, right where that worm could just float. Smoked it, bass came out of the grass, smoked it. So target or use a drop shot. You can use that all year round um, on ledges or on the edges of grass. So next up, what I'm kind of experimenting with is a chatterbait. Um, deeper chatterbaits work great in the summertime. I'm just kind of coming up with this as I go. Uh, I'm more of a spinnerbait guy, so I know that works great all year round, especially in the summer and fall when they shatter spawning, schooling up. So be sure to have a spinnerbait tied on. Um, if you want a chatterbait tied on, great. I'm just experimenting with it, so I don't have a whole lot of experience with it yet to know exactly when, where, what to throw, you know? So there's that. But for probably the number one bait to throw in the summertime, it's either gonna be your easiest all year round, or, I mean, everybody started with this. So it is a Cinco stick bait, um, whatever you wanna call it. So stick bait, Works amazing, great all year round, but right now you can rig it in so many ways. So you can Texas rig it, and it's just gonna hop along the bottom like that and shake, or on a shaky head, and that end's gonna shake like that. But if you really wanna target them, use it on a wacky rig. So the wacky rig's gonna sit there and that worm's gonna float down, not this erratic, but it's gonna float down and shimmy down to the bottom and the bass are gonna come up and eat it. Worms are your friends this summer. There's nothing a bass is gonna eat more than a worm in the summertime. So you can have it on a Texas rig like I have on one, or a wacky rig, um, but kind of underrated, or I'm not really sure. I think this kind of goes hand in hand with the Senko, is the ribbon tail worm. So right here, just pulled one out. This is a culprit fire and ice color, but that ribbon tail worm, I mean, I don't pick it up any other time because I have other baits to use. Um, so, but I would say a ribbon tail worm or Cinco works great in the summertime. Um, Texas rig that ribbon tail worm, hop it, swim it, hop it, swim it, and you'll get smoked. The bluegill is gonna eat your tails five out of 50 times, okay? Um, that's actually not good percentage. We'll say like five out of six times, they'll eat your the tail on your worm. But 
what the final bait, final bait I have here, so kind of, um, is a deep diving crankbait. So this is a Spro Little John XL. I just randomly picked it up, but and this is silent, so that wasn't a good example. But as I said earlier, the uh, bass are down deep. All right. And you got to find a way to get down there. So get your big old 10XD out. Yeah, get your big old 10XD. Dives 25 plus feet. Okay. Get it out. Throw it down there. And just crank it. Or, or you can go with a smaller deep diving crank. But something that will get down to the bottom quickly. And it's a moving bait still. You can use a lipless crank. I use I use, I tend to use more of the lipless crank, but deep diving cranks I tie on just as much, and I catch just as many fish. So it goes hand in hand, whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, if you're fishing around more grass, I would say a lipless crank because it gets out of grass just a little bit easier. It still has treble hooks, but it gets out of grass just a little bit easier for you. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. So. Worms, frogs, and deep diving cranks. Pretty much the basics. You can flip, you can do a spinner bait if you want, but worms, definitely. So that's really all I got to say. Um, if you like what you have heard today, be sure to hit that red subscribe button. Um, once again, trying to hit 400 subs for the end of June. If I do, I'll be giving away Guggen Squad Biggins XL kit to one lucky subscriber. And if we hit a thousand subscribers for the end of the year, I'll be giving away two juggernaut boxes to two lucky subscribers. So be sure to be subscribed. And I do giveaways all the time. So my last giveaway video was the Ollie's one, I believe. But if you guys are watching this, check back a couple videos ago, try to have it linked uh, at the end. Check out the revealing all the giveaway winners because I had two people claim out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, seven. I got seven boxes over there uh, that need to be getting to winners. If not, they're going to be given away to somebody else, okay? So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to be subscribed if you need. Take the verse today with you, and I'll catch you guys on the water. Peace. Thank you.